Yeah, so here we are for the, the first of our Yacht Sales Co. Do For webinars. Uh, after uh, a fantastic 2020 of doing multi hole solution webinars, focusing on our multi hole brand, Fontaine Bajot, and, uh, and, and all other multi hole areas of our business, we are happy today to be here discussing our mono hole brand, the Do For, which uh, under the umbrella of the Yacht Sales Co. and under the leadership of Bob Vinks, who we'll introduce you to shortly, uh, is we're very proud to be now representing this brand here in Australia. So today we'll be discussing the Do For 430. Uh, as we always do, thank, a big thank you to the owners of the vessel for allowing us to uh, use their boat today to uh, do this walkthrough. It's always great when uh, our clients allow this to occur. Uh, and the, uh, the gents are down there with Marcus on camera and Bob on board doing the presentation in uh, Middle Harbour in Sydney, where we will uh, be walking through this fantastic yacht. Now I'm just going to change slides. As we always do, the next webinar in our Yacht Sales Co um, presentation calendar is a live webinar uh, uh, along with our partners, the Yacht Share Mediterranean, we're going to be doing a uh, presentation on cruising and discovering the Lycian coast of Turkey. So that will be in uh, on the 25th of March. We're looking forward to that. Last year, we did the same thing, uh, talking about the uh, Aegean coast of Turkey and Greece, and it was fantastic. So we are very much looking forward to that uh, webinar in a few weeks' time. For those who are new to uh, the webinar series, you can uh, view the webinars. We always put them up as a recording onto our YouTube channels. Uh, we have our Yacht Sales Co YouTube channel, and we also have the Multi Hole Solutions YouTube channel. So uh, if you wanna go back and uh, see some of our previous webinars, please uh, feel free. So myself, I'm Greg Boller. Um, I've been uh, hosting the webinars uh, throughout 2020 and will continue to do so in 2021. And in the background, we've got Rachel Crook, who's our marketing manager who uh, sets up these webinars uh, each time. And the presenter today is Bob Vinks, who's the sales and business development manager for the Do For uh, brand and the Yacht Sales Co. He's, uh, many of us have known Bob for, me, uh, for a long time. He's, a, as we said there, a stalwart. It's a nice way of saying whatever you might want, but a stalwart of the marine industry with uh, ocean and boating experience, including 38 Sydney boat shows. Um, that's a, a fair number. So uh, as we say, he's now managing the Yacht Sales Co and our new boat division on the, and he's a do for expert. And I'll let uh, Bob explain that more once we hand over to him. So there she is, the fantastic do for 430. I'll let Bob explain some of the other uh, yachts in the Do4 range, and we'll endeavor to do more of these walkthroughs on other Do4s as the year progresses. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna stop the share screen. We're gonna bring Bob into view. I'm just going to stop my video, uh, and we're going to hand over to you, Bob. So welcome, and uh, we hope to uh, have a good session of uh, walkthrough with you. Uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks very much for your introduction and uh, welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, my name is Bob Binks. I represent uh, the Dew 4 range for our company, the Yacht Sales Co. And this afternoon, we're aboard this lovely Dew 4 430, which has been kindly loaned to us, as Greg mentioned before, by some lo a lovely family who, believe it or not, this is their first ever yacht. So that again shows that our boats are easy to sail and fantastic for first time owners. We'll run through a number of features on the boat. In this arrangement, I'll be guided by our position. So I'll be followed by the camera and I'll guide you through some of the features as we walk through the cockpit, past the transom, through the cockpit, up forward, and then come back down into the cabin. So we'll start at the back of the boat. As you may see, just uh, while you're there, we've got a dinghy down the side of the boat. That's the owner's tender. It's about a 2.8 metre inflatable. That folds up neatly into this aperture of the transom here. It's a designated spot for the dinghy. Oh, yeah. One of the wonderful features that Dewfor are quite well known for, and now copied by others, is our uh, aft entertaining galley. We've 
we've got uh, hot and cold pressure water here, gas bottle storage, gas stove, uh, well, barbecue grill is uh, other than you use it. Uh, perfect for the entertainment because you're here at the back of the boat with your customers or your friends in the cockpit. It makes it very easy entertaining and of course it keeps the smells out of the boat. So I'm going to come with me, we'll just walk through here. You'll also notice a very nicely uh, positioned boarding ladder which folds well down into the water. It also has these handles to make it easy to pull yourself out of the water because that's sometimes a, an afterthought but beautifully designed on this boat. Further forward here, we've got uh, an easy step to get up onto the boat. There's storage in behind there for your life raft. And after a swim, we have a hot and cold shower here, which is recessed into the side of the hull here. That's just a handheld shower for us to hose off or getting the sand off the kids' feet after a play on the beach. Yeah, that's all right. Bob, I'm just going to interrupt. I'm just going to interrupt for a minute, Bob, while you're stepping up into the cockpit, just for those uh, those uh, people who are following our webinar today. I did forget one thing to mention. If you have any questions at all, we're happy to take those questions. And all you have to do is click on the Q and A box. And if you type your question, then Rachel or I will endeavour to answer. And just one other uh, thing, Bob, just before we go uh, off through the 4:30, can you just mention the other? Uh, boats in the uh, do four range. Yeah, certainly, Greg. Well, do four of uh, a nice range of yachts, starting at 31 feet. That one's been in the range for a little while now, but ideal first yacht. I'd, uh, most of all of our yachts do have a self-tacking headsail. So we start with a 31. We then have a 36. We then have the 390, which we have one of arriving uh, in a couple of months time, in time for the Sydney boat show. After the 39, there's this lovely boat here, the 430. Those two models were released very late in 2018 and really first launched at the market in 2019. It's their newest range. After the 430, we still have an existing 460. Now a brand new model, a 470, of which we have one arriving. As I mentioned, that will be in time for the Sanctuary Cove boat show. Can't wait to see that one. From the 470, we have the new 530 which was released last year. And from the 5.30, there's now uh, still the 56 exclusive. And further to that, we have the latest release, a new 61, which we just saw some snippets of just the other day. And it looks fantastic. So that's the range right now. G4 have uh, promised us, and uh, as part of their business plan for the next at least four years, every year, there'll be two new models released. So we very much look forward to their growth and their their investment into the future of the voting industry and to allow us to give options to our to our clients. How's that, Greg? Yeah, thanks, Bob. And as you and I both did last week, we uh, joined in with the uh, the annual dealer conference of Do4, and it was quite impressive, wasn't it? And one of those announcements was that they will be releasing two new models each year for the upcoming years, which is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, very exciting times. We're very much looking forward to that. Okay, so we'll let you carry on with the uh, the walkthrough. Yep, certainly. Come with me. So this uh, this boat has our, our new pedestal steering wheels, which you can see here. We uh, have easy access between the wheels for access from the cabin and through the cockpit, and this allows customers or the skipper to sit at one side of the boat, usually on the windward side of the boat. He can sit up here, have easy vision down the wide decks. There's this lovely little step here that's incorporated. This gives you a bit of extra, a bit of extra security while you're sailing and heeling over, of course, either while sitting or standing. Safety is always paramount on the view four. That also then just folds away. At the helm, we have instruments for sailing, obviously, and engine instrumentation. We start and spot the motor from here. We have a TACO engine hour meter. On this side, we have the autopilot, which has a repeater for the instrumentation. In the middle, let's close these for you. In the middle here, we have a large screen GPS plotter that has many repeat functions on that screen as well for easy access to the information. And on the port side here, we have the wind instrumentation, log and depth sounder, as well as the steering compass. 
So again, everything's laid out for ease of use. We have sailing uh, controls that are easily led. We have a main sheet that comes back to either side to the helm, known as the German main sheet system. So if the skip feels a bit overpowered, very easily, just a matter of letting the line off here at the winch, ease the main sheet if he's uh, short-handed. This makes it the safety again. Yeah. A lovely cockpit table here. Plenty of storage for your kit bits, winch handles, sun cream. A lovely table that opens up to have room for at least for eight and dining. And in the cockpit, of course, both sides have enormous lockers that go all the way out to the side of the boat, fully lined, deep enough. On this boat, the owner has either uh, an outrig outboard, uh, a couple of fenders on each side, and of course a toolbox, and then extra ropes and so on for mooring. And Bob, is that bim is that bimini above you? Is that a factory option? Yes, Greg. This is the standard bimini and dodger. If you want, these are a, a, a separate order, but they are the standard equipment. The bimini is great. It's got a little window here to see through to check your mainsail uh, function and make sure she was uh, fitting and sailing to the controls of the sheeting. The bimini also has this little LED lighting in it for nighttime vision. The Dodger has these nice little pockets in it for storage. Currently the owner has got the center part of the, the clears taken off. They zip off within a moment to allow some extra ventilation, but full protection from the sun. Yeah. Grab handles both on the aft end of the Dodger and also on the side of the Dodger, there are some grab handles as you walk forward onto the deck. Yeah, a must, a must for Australian conditions, obviously. We've got a beautiful day here, and uh, hey, I haven't got too much protection, but I'm glad I got the Dodger and the Bimini up. It's, uh, it's welcome. And I, I know that as we go below, we're going to get very impressed uh, from our walk, um, our rehearsal yesterday uh, by the amount of light. But one thing that I, I'm impressed by there is at the forward end of those uh, of the seats is the, uh, the the windows down into the lower cabins. Yeah, that's right. Well, Greg, what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to take a little walk over the deck first and complete the on deck inspection to show our clients. So that at least we can cover all that first and you're in the momentum of the, uh, the inspection. So as I walk forward, uh, I'll have Marcus follow me. We have all the controls for the sail controls leading back to the cockpit here to a winch both sides. So this boat has the standard fully battened mainsail. There's an option which is quite favorable for a cruiser type person for an in-mast furling mainsail. That is not an expensive option and uh, one that's quite favorable particularly for those who are short-handed. But on the standard setup, we have all the controls, as I mentioned, come back to the cockpit, from the traveler, the boom vane, the reefing lines, the owl's hall, of course, halyards, and a topping rig. So again, all marked around on self-tailing winches. And there's also an option to have all, or any, or one, or all of the winches made into electric winches for push button ease of use. You may also notice here, Greg, that um, we've got these lovely ports that you made mention to. These windows are fixed and they allow a lot of extra light into the aft cabins as well. You'll notice these flush hatches here. These are very much flush in line with the rest of the deck, opening up to giving ventilation again into all parts of the cabin, in particular these ones for the aft cabin. We've got extra ports into the cockpit sides here, again, allowing ventilation into the aft cabin, which of course, they like today is always welcome. So I think uh, from that part of our explanation, we've got all of this covered here. And uh, I'd like to take you forward now, if that's okay. Easy access through this transition here between the Dodger and the Bimini and plenty to hang on to for safety. again, Marcus. So uh, as we walk forward, uh, I think it's quite easy to see the wide decks and easy access forward. Look, I'm a six foot tall guy and I can get past the shrouds very easily. The shrouds are set well outboard. That gives good 
engineering benefit and strength to the rig so you don't have any overlapping head cells, but this allows for a slightly lighter set of mast, so less weight aloft, but it still gives lots of strength and uh, allows for a very comfortable sail plan. Speaking of sail plan, the standard, as I may have mentioned, for most of our yachts is for a self-tacking head saw. So we have a, a jib, which is about a 97% of the four triangle size. And it is literally on a, a, a radial type of track here. And all you need to do is while you're sailing again, if you're short-handed, you can just set the jib and the main sheet. And if you need to tack, literally just turn the wheel and the jib will do its own thing by going across and taking it across to the other side from starboard port. Further along on the decks here, you may notice there are some lovely little uh, LED lights that are incorporated into the tow rail. These give a nice glow and a uh, bit of help at night if you need to go forward and uh, it makes again for more comfort and safety. These are the larger windows that you mentioned, Greg. So these are directly above the galley in the main cabin forward, and they also have an opening hatch. Uh, we've got a large saloon hatch in the middle of the cabin. Again, this is the standard rig. Everything you see on the boat is made in France. Uh, the experience of these mast makers are particularly good. This is a double swept back spreader rig. It has a fixed backstay as standard, and uh, always emerging on the side of caution so heavily rigged and uh, it'll, uh, it'll last a lot of time and in very good and strong conditions. And Bob I notice that boom is very accessible. Yeah it is Greg. So something the G4 have worked on and have done for a long time now they've lowered the gooseneck the connection of the boom to the mast. In olden days which I'm talking about my history Booms were quite high to allow for a bit of extra headroom in the cockpit. And that issue created was that it was very difficult to put the sail away. So on this boom, you may notice the gooseneck is quite low. Again, I'm your typical six footer. That allows for easy stacking of the mainsail back into the bag. And the zipper runs along the side of the boom bag. So you're not stretching over and it's very ergonomic. On this boat, the zip is on the, other, um, on the other side here. The mainsail comes with roller bearing tra uh, cars at the battens and very nice uh, slugs at the rest of the mainsail. Literally, when you are going to drop the sail, with the how you go, the sail concertinas perfectly into the boom bag. And all you have to do is take the halyard off and zip up the bag. And also, 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 Bob, I noticed down on the deck beside your left foot, there's a, a Genoa track. Yes, well, this customer is a bit sporty as well, and uh, we have the option of including or adding these Genoa tracks. So I mentioned before a self-tacking jib. Of course, it has to all be in front of the mast, and that's why we call it about a 95 or 97% of the four triangle. That's a, a term that we use for the size of a headsail. But on the, and again, that's self-tacking, but there's an option for a Genoa, and a Genoa is described as a for sale that is sheeted aft of the mast. So the mast is up here, we're a metre behind. But of course you have to tack the Genoa, but it gives you more area. In this instance, it's around about 108, 109% area of the Ford Triangle. Gives a bit more grunt for those who would like to uh, challenge the race course or maybe do a bit of uh, social racing or, hey, these owners are looking to go to Hamilton Island next year, which I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try and hitch a ride. It should be fun. So we'll move further forward. As I mentioned, we've got more flush hatches here. These two are into the main forward cabin. The forward cabin also has this lovely light window that beams the light into the forward cabin and gives you vision from the main saloon forward. And another hatch here on the front deck. This deck is lovely and flat. We've actually incorporated some uh, cushions for the foredeck in the past for those who are worshippers of the sun uh, or just a nice place to put a shade and sit outside on the foredeck. Even further forward of course we're going to have the uh, the anchor well. This is a lovely big size to access the road. The anchor winch is also underneath here and the remote for the anchor winch is here. 
this is the standard setup. There's also an option to have a control in the cockpit with a chain counter, so you could actually raise and lower the anchor from the cockpit as well. I'd like to have that in my boat, but this is the standard and it works particularly well. Uh, as you can see, we've got plenty of road and uh, anchor and chain there, and even an extra fender. Clips away neatly and a locking little latch there. But even further, you may notice we've got a bow sprit on this boat. This is a standard feature. This has multiple, a multiple uh, range of benefits. One, of course, is having the anchor well forward so there's no challenge of it hitting the bow. You can also take off a, uh, there's a, a, a takeoff point there for a cruising off the breeze sail. A Jenica or a, an MPS as they're known. So there's a U bolt at the very front there. So a furling Genoa or furling, uh, sorry, Jenica can be attached on that and hoisted up on a spinnaker halyard, and that'll be your downwind cruising sail. They've uh, come a long way in the last few years with the top down furling Jenicas. I've used them extensively and they're, uh, they're fun to use. No need for a spinnaker pole anymore with these beamier boats. We find that. The apparent wind is what we're chasing and uh, not running dead square is uh, it's it's a bit of the older style even the uh, the skiffs nowadays you'll see they've all got these prodders that's our uh, that's our product on the g4 430 and bob uh, there'd be a fair bit of load on that bow sprit is it is it just composite uh greg yeah it is it's got a stainless steel uh, backing underneath that it's all well engineered and that's all incorporated and bolted into the the four on the bow fitting, on the stem fitting, uh, yeah, all very strong, of course. So that's uh, that's that's loaded up and available to take uh, all your standard long and bigger cruising sails. So I think we'll now move slowly backwards again on our nice wide decks, and uh, we'll start looking down below if you like. Are there any questions? No, not at the moment, Bob. And that's a really good shot that Marcus is holding there. It gives a very good impression of uh, how wide those decks are for access. So I might get Marcus to hold that shot for a moment while you make your way back. Good, I'll do that right now for you. While uh, Marcus is walking back down the uh, the yacht, just a reminder, if you have any questions, just um, post them. Um, we do have a couple of questions, so we'll uh, come to those shortly. Uh, we'll present them to Bob. So Bob, as Marcus is walking down the stairs there, I have a couple of questions that we might just ask now sure. before they get on. Um, John has asked, uh, what are the keel options? Sure. The standard keel is a 2.1 metre draft. Uh, there is an option for a shallow draft of 1.75. Funnily enough, only just the other day, I had a client from Brisbane who is inquiring about the shallow draft for their natural lower depths available close to them. Look, people often ask the question, what's the trade-off? Well, obviously, trade-off, shallow, you can get closer to the, uh, the shoreline or navigate more water where there's less draft. The trade-off is that possibly it's marginal. On the breeze, when you're hard on the breeze, tacking to windward, you may have a bit more leeway. Shoal draft weighs a bit more than the standard keel, but obviously its centre of effort is a bit higher, but the riding moment is still similar. So as the boat goes to windward and you're on a heel, with less keel in the water, there's going to be more tendency for the boat to go sideways. But there is another advantage on the reciprocal side, and that is there's less draft. So if you're running downwind, there's less wetted surface, and it could be argued that it might be faster off the wind. If you're a serious sailor, if you want to do more performance oriented sailing and draft isn't an issue, the standard keel is preferred and 
that's what the designer is uh, obviously drawn for this boat. Very good. And listen, we're down below now. That's amazing how bright and light that is for a monohull. Very young, copping a bit of sun here right now. I can fit on my, uh, my little dial, but what is nice is the boat has fantastic arrangement of covers for all of the hatches. So that's just for these two. Each of the windows here have curtains for privacy at night. All the main hatches have two different types of coverings. We've got full block out, and there's also one available for mosquito nets. And they're all on the standard prefab hatches in both half cabin, centre and forward. Uh, so again, to keep some sun out of the boat and the heat out of the boat, these work particularly well. These are on a little line, they retract and retract right back underneath a, a plinth there. And again, you can see there's enormous amounts of light here right now. And while Marcus is in that location sitting there, it's probably a good time just to tilt down slightly. You can show us the, uh, the, the storage. Yeah. So, look, whenever you look on any uh, webinar or YouTube, everyone talks about storage. Now, look, if you're going to be going away for a while, as this, this family just went up to Fort Stevens over Christmas, they've got two teenage boys. They had their stand-up paddle boards. The galley needs to be equipped. You've got to have room for your food. Hey, more importantly, you've got to have room for your booze. I think it's in this one here. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. So anywhere there's a void, G4 have made good use of the space. Uh, there's storage underneath the bunks, of course. Look, there are even drawers under a lot, a lot of the bunks as well, which makes it easier to use rather than pulling up a cushion. There are nice rollers. And you'll see these throughout this cabin here and the forward cabin. Um, there's a good storage locker here under the bilge. And of course the galley is full of lockers all around. Something that we understand is uh, an advantage over a lot of our competitors. We have a lot more use of the interior fit out where we use a lot more uh, adaption of the cupboards and storage. You'll see that there are cupboards all the way along four to aft all the way in the galley both sides, and that also happens up forward. There's plenty of storage. It's these little things that make us stand out against our competitors. Things also such as our water and fuel tanks. Ours are about 20% bigger in capacity than a lot of our competitors. It's these smaller things that show the value in a Jew for. You may see here, this is a typical blocker here. You'll see solid timber fitting on the end of the, 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 the lid. It's not just a bit of plywood with veneer stuck on the outside. You know, here too, this is a solid backing of the saloon bunk seat. This table has the option to go down and they've taken that option on this. It literally, you change the legs underneath the table. There's a cushion that goes on top. That's for those extra freeloaders who may have had a couple of too many reds. Over here, oh, we may just move a bit further forward now, I think. Uh, I'd like to show you the galley. So uh, you've probably seen that this is a little bit different to what most traditionalists would consider a standard galley. So on from our 390 due for and up, the standard galley is forward here at the main bulkhead, and we call it the forward galley. On this model and most of the others, there's an option to have the traditional galley, but that's generally if there is a other uh, charter cabin or the Pullman cabin, which I can demonstrate to you later. But we've found this very popular. People have come around to it and the owners all love them. The idea, of course, is you've got more room from one side to the other for preparation. You can have two people in the galley because you can actually spread the workload. And it offers many other little spots to put things. Now, this cupboard's twofold. Well, <laughs> on this boat, the grog. But this cupboard also allows for a pop-up colour TV. Again, good storage all the way around the galley. We've got a very deep sink here, stainless steel. We've got a salt water pump as well as your water for hot and cold, which is uh, standard, of course. On the starboard side here, we have the fridge, which is a nice big double drawer isotherm fridge. I'll demonstrate that to you when uh, Marcus comes down. Large prep area. We've got power outlets here. Should you be on shore power, you can use 240 volt. 
We've also got USB power, not only in the galley, but in each of the cabins and at the nav table. This boat also has the optional deep freezer. Oh, look at that. <laughs> a couple of zooper dupers and they're cold and frozen, which is a lovely thing for the boys. Uh, two better gas stove with an oven. Uh, Christine was telling me the other day they had a fantastic roast dinner on this boat, as good as uh, any cook would have wanted. Uh, they, uh, they totally enjoy the, the options that are available to them, whether it be cooking indoors or outdoors in the uh, entertaining grill out in the cockpit there. Here's just a showing of the fridge. So these folks leave the power on, shore power. So the fridge and the freezer are always on. Batteries are always up to speed. Having it on shore power maintains the battery level. It has a battery charger. So batteries are always topped up if needed. You can run your fridges. It'll also keep the hot water on at 240 degrees. Uh, sorry, uh, at, at full temperature while you're uh, off the boat, so you can have a hot shower if you're going to use the boat as your little weekender. So, Bob, has this yacht got a gen set fitted or is it just shore power? Uh, no, no, this has just got the shore power. There are options for gen sets, but uh, we found that it's not that much of a popular choice on this model. But from this model up, definitely a standard feature. Uh, the shore power is standard. A lot of owners opt for solar panel, or um, again, you can take a portable generator if that's your requirement. We find that uh, on a boat this size, that the requirements for a gen set for having a water maker, for example, or heavier uh, drawn uh, instruments or uh, tools on the boat, not requirement as much, but certainly on the bigger boats, it's definitely an easy option. And of course, then you can have uh, air conditioning as well. And water maker? Yeah, water maker can be fitted. Uh, again, we find it's more of an option on the slightly larger models. Uh, we find that this boat, although totally capable of doing any crossing, generally uh, we're finding that it's a, an Australia style of boat or a Pacific cruising boat, and the, uh, the, the capacities of the water and the fuel are more than ample for uh, handling the, uh, the, the lack of needing a water maker. But again, if it's a requirement, we can arrange that. And am I correct in understanding you've got 430 litres of fresh water capacity there? Yeah, that's right. Look, our closest competitors are around about uh, 320. So, you know, that's a fair bit of extra water. And uh, um, well, I've spoken about this exact topic with the owner and uh, two boys, mum and dad on the boat over, uh, over Christmas, they were a week without having to worry about filling up the tanks. And that was using it uh, very well. And also while you're standing there, and we'll get Marcus to do a pan around while you're discussing it, you've got choices in the timber color, is that correct? The, the veneers? Yeah, so this is the uh, the light oak interior. We have this and a, uh, a new teak that the factory are offering. To date, I believe 80% of the boats that have come into Australia have chosen this timber. The slightly dark timber is very much a uh, American style of uh, uh, colorings. Again, we have some options and it's a personal choice naturally. So uh, we find this very neutral, very easy to change up. There are numerous choices of fabrics for the cushions. And if there's something you don't like, well, we can get it made for you. That's something that we offer is to personalize and customize the boat to your requirements should you uh, have a desire to be, you know, want something a bit special. We could put leather in if you wanted to, but this is standard and there are a number of standard options which can be literally uh, chosen off the fact sheet or the price list. Very good, thank you. So the forward cabin. So this boat has the two head, three cabin arrangement. So this has the full island bed up forward. I'll just open the head door. There you go, Marcus. So what's lovely about this is for people who'd like to entertain, maybe not the family, who may want to take out another couple. This way you can both have your own separate cabin and separate en suite. The forward toilet and shower, obviously a little bit smaller, but still very comfortable, very easy to use. The forward bunk here, it's the size of a queen bed. Underneath the bunk, there are two drawers there for blankets. And on either side, just 
uh, at the base here, we've got hanging cupboards and shelving. Another nice feature you may see there are the opening ports there that uh, let more light in on the sides of the hull. They have a sliding cover. You can see on the starboard side, on the right hand side, yeah, there's a little blue uh, hanger. I'll, I'll just demonstrate this because it's a nice feature. It gives full blackout. Together with that and the screen, and this window here, you can get a, lot, a good blackout, so allowing good sleep and a good line in the morning. That's if the pelicans don't wake you up. Nice, solid, beautiful, uh, sorry, a nice soft uh, foam mattress here. And again, good shelving, nice reading lights up on either side, uh, LED lighting throughout. And once again, good ventilation with opening hatch just above Marcus now and in the head. And just coming back to the power chat while Marcus is walking through there, I see the power sockets there. So you've got a charger inverter. No, on this boat, we've just got the shore power. Uh, we've got about uh, 500 amp hour of uh, battery storage. And in each cabin, it has USB and a 240 outlet so that when you're plugged into the shore power, you can use 240 uh, products throughout the boat. Uh, otherwise, the USB obviously can charge and use your laptop or your, your, your uh, iPads and the like. Uh, but an inverter is an option, absolutely. And so is a microwave if required. It just obviously needs a little bit more battery power to be able to handle and sustain the power requirements. So moving back, we, uh, we walk past the large head on the way through. And of course, this being the main bathroom for the boat, it has a large area to be able to have a separate shower aft and the toilet forward. Hot and cold, of course. Both bathrooms have holding tanks for your black and grey water. The shower sump has a gulper pump, which pumps out all the water. There are no puddles left. Again, good storage in behind the cupboards here in the head. Um, adjustable rail for the shower. Um, and again, all treated so that it won't be affected by the, the water on the timber. Hangers for uh, towels and clothing, of course, and another opening port for the wet area, which allows for the ventilation to dry that out. Here we have the nav station. So the standard panel here offers a number of features. Obviously, it allows you to itemize what power you're looking to draw upon and off. It has a screen here that gives you both battery storage capacity and water capacity on a, uh, an LED readout. Uh, it also shows you if you're on the shore power, it shows you which lights you've got on for the navigation lights. Above here, we have a VHF radio, a fusion stereo with USB connectivity. There's also room here for another screen, if you like. We've seen a few options here. Obviously, we've got a big screen in the cockpit, which works for most people. Uh, in the northern climates or the northern hemisphere, I should say, a lot of people opt for an extra screen because they may be on autopilot and escaping the weather. So you can either have a generic branded Raymarine that copies off the, the panel in the cockpit. But you could also opt to have a larger screen here, which could be a repeater for your instruments as well, or it could be repeated onto the TV that can pop out of that cupboard forward in the galleys I mentioned earlier. Um, before we show you the aft cabins, if that's all right, we can show you the easy access to the, uh, to, the, to the engine room. You may notice before I lift up this panel, these are scallop stairs, a nice angle on the stairs, not too steep, and good handholds either side to make for, again, safe sailing and safe navigation back into the cockpit. There's a handy shelf in here. I actually like to put my shoes and my thongs and maybe a winch handle in there if I need to, or you could put your, a grab bag Lifting this is on gas struts. Volvo is the, uh, the standard brand of motor for our range of yachts. This motor is the upgraded 60 horsepower coupled with a three blade folding propeller. The standard is a 50 horsepower 
and a uh, three blade fixed propeller. The Volvos are all freshwater cooled with a header tank. All the items you need to access for uh, checking and maintaining by, uh, by the owner are all easily uh, seen. Uh, clean bilge, easy access, and also access either side in the cabins to get to the stern drive, or to the uh, sail drive and other parts of the, uh, of the motor. So Bob, 60 horsepower is quite a bit of power for a 43-foot yacht. Look, there's never any compromise on power on a yacht like this. We, look, it's, it's certainly more than enough. We, uh, we find that Aussies like a bit of extra horsepower. Uh, we, yeah, there's no compromise for that. It doesn't need it in most conditions. Uh, again, if you're looking to do a lot of motoring, the higher the horsepower, probably the lesser strain on the engine. But in saying that, the 50 is married up well to the boat, particularly if you have an efficient propeller, that would be, uh, it would be certainly a perfect match for the design of the boat and the displacement. So moving up, aft, naturally we can see the aft cabins here. So the, in this family, each boy has got their own cabin. Uh, each has, again, a power supply for USB or 240. There's the window that I described earlier that looks into the cockpit so you can stay in touch with what's going on. A hatch above, and we're panning down to a hatch on the side of the cockpit you can see as well. Also extra storage in a hanging locker. And on the center line, there's also lockers and storage. Oh, oops, a daisy. <laughs> ah, just another locker for the booze. <laughs> so, I think we've uh, captured most of the uh, the essence of this boat. I think the LED lights, obviously not particularly needing lights tonight, but very cosy boat at night. There's uh, lovely mood lighting, helmet lighting underneath the uh, the cupboards in the saloon here, and then also under the floor on the floor lighting, as well as uh, courtesy lighting on the engine box to get up and down into the cockpit. Well done, Bob, very impressive. We have a couple of questions, so we'll get Marcus to have a seat and uh, give his uh, hand a rest there. Well done, Jets, good walk through. Um, I think the thing that's impressed me the most is the uh, amount of natural light that's, that's accessing the, the, uh, the cabin. Uh, there's certainly been so much progress there in the last 10 to 15 to 20 years in terms of uh, improving that. And you can also see looking around the boat, that the construction looks really solid. Um, and it's, it's, you know, where you're sitting there, the, uh, the, uh, the whole color tone of the yacht is very fresh, very bright and very modern. So a couple of other questions. Um, one is, what's the delivery time on uh, most of the do for models, like the 430 you're sitting aboard now? Well, I was just looking at the list earlier, Greg. At the moment, <laughs> the factory is going through a period of enormous demand. I see there are a couple of slots available for uh, certain boats before the end of the factory's closure for their summer, which is in August. I believe there's one, maybe two of these available before that time. So when they give us a delivery date, that is their X factory completion date. We then add about two months onto that to get it delivered, commissioned and handed over. At the moment, we could still have one of these delivered before Christmas this year. And with current pricing, uh, the, the yacht you're sitting aboard now, what, what would you you know, I don't want to tie you down to it, but what would you have as an approximate price of this boat in the current fit out? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, the main features that would be options on this boat would be this slightly lighter updated f uh, furniture fitting uh, finish, I beg your pardon, the larger motor. It has the upgraded instrument package, the Dodger, the Bimini, uh, Pretty much it. Otherwise, uh, we're looking at this package around about 550, Greg. 
Is that uh, euros or, or, or Australian okay. dollars? Aussie dollars, taxes paid, turnkey, ready to go. We even put a safety pack on so you don't leave the dock unsafe. So that comes with a, an ether, light jackets, flares, fire extinguishers, bow hook. The only thing you really need to add is a dinghy and we can help you with those as well. And is that X factory or in Australia? No, that's here, landed in Australia, transported and all put together here with instruction and a, and a proper handover. Oh, sorry, we've got a... Got a little, and that uh, that includes the duties and the taxes. Yeah, it does, Greg. Yeah, all legally yeah. handed over and everything paid for here in Australia, being GST and stamp duty. So that's five hundred and thirty thousand Australian, yeah. Sorry, mate, five fifty for us. Five fifty. Okay, yeah. just checking. <laughs> uh, I'd rather be accurate. I don't want to give it away. No, that's, and, um, that's very complete, and we're, we're very uh, we're very well priced against our competitors. In fact. Uh, Nine times out of 10, we are uh, more competitive than our uh, compatriots on the water. And as I mentioned before, we find that uh, our boats stack up favorably against them in areas such as batteries, fuel, water, size of gear, dimensions, and again, at a similar price range, if not more, more uh, better value. And I also, um, we, we've had a question there. Someone's noticed on the website that there's some of the do four models have like a, a wrap, like a blue wrap. Um, is, that, is that an option? Yeah, look, we're actually anticipating to do that on our Ju4 470 that's arriving soon. We were so impressed by the look of that boat on the new release uh, only two weeks ago. So we're looking to do that. On this boat, it could easily be done around somewhere between five and six thousand dollars any color you want and we wrap the boat in a vinyl and that can include any logos uh, registration numbers uh yeah it's it's very nice and again a multitude of colors we're seeing a lot of cars nowadays having that done so it's also extended to the boating uh, arena and easily done we would do that at the time of commissioning when we uh, put the boat together for you and the uh... The, the yacht, some people have, uh, have asked that uh, currently you've got a Dacron set of sails on that boat. What if someone wants to upgrade to a more exotic uh, sail wardrobe? Sure. So the factory offer a uh, off the shelf upgrade and they call it the Grand Prix pack. It's on this boat, it's about 10,000 euros. So about you know, 15, 16,000 dollars. That gives you the, the go fast gear. So it's a, an upgraded sail pattern. It is a, uh, a laminate Dacron sail, but it's a, a tri-radial cut. It has uh, probably an upgraded battens that go in that as well. Uh, a bit more go-fast gear. It'll include the Genoa as opposed to a self-tacker. So we gear it up for the performance oriented people. It'll have an adjustable backstay, for example, more fine tuning. So for, you know, for those who are looking for that extra turn of speed, it's well worth it. It's, uh, it does get it out the box a bit quicker. And another another question, Bob, who designs the Do4 yachts? Well, it's an Italian design. Umberto Felci is the designer. He's been with the company now for about uh, 20 years, I believe. He is the uh, in-house designer for the boats. So as they say, the Italian flair with the French know-how. It's an, uh, an interesting matter, uh, Greg, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, G4 is the leading brand in Italy, France and Croatia. So we're outselling our competitors in those three countries who are regarded as the biggest consumer of new yachts. And we're getting very close to that here in Australia now too. And um, you've been involved with the, the monohull industry for many years and you've seen it transform. What, what would you say is the thing that uh, is, is impressing you most about the, the way Do4 is improving all the time, its design, its look, its, its appeal? Well, Greg, I've come back from a, a, a life, as you mentioned, of the boating industry. We were manufacturers and our biggest challenge was to keep up with new designs and the scale of economy. We were building 20 boats a year and we thought that was pretty good. But of course, we've only got a, a limited market to attend to. Q4 has the, the, the power to be able to market to a worldwide audience. Uh, having good dealers and having the support of the dealers, the factory that then can afford to reinvest in new design. Felch has obviously come up with a good pen. He's uh, found the sweet spot that people look for. 
I think what that means is that, you know, they're listening to the customer's requirements. We've got a number of owners who have, they're onto their third or fourth due for. Due for are quite intent on listening to what the customers want and staying up to date with all the techniques of manufacturing. The way they build this boat, if later, if anyone wants to come on board, I could demonstrate it a bit hard now, but just the way that they construct the boat. The deck, for example, is an infused deck. That means that it's a one piece, there's no extra headliners, which means that it's well insulated, keeps the weight down and also the thickness of the deck so you get more headroom. Down below, the grid. The boat's built with a hull that comes out of a mould, then a grid gets put in. On our boats, that grid is fiberglassed into the boat. A lot of our competitors don't do that. You'll see that our bulkheads are all glassed into the sides of the boat. Again, having good options, a boat that's sea kindly and fast, easy to sail, short or with a crew. These are all features that people like. I think one, now, sorry, Greg, sorry. One, one main feature that people do come back to the Jew Fort is the, the use of the traditional method still. There's still a lot of timber on board. A lot of others are moving away from that for ease of use because time is money in production. But there's a lot of traditional craft still involved in the building of Jew 4. Jew 4 have a long history and uh, that continues to grow. And again, now with the, 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 the marriage with Fontaine Peugeot, we're seeing some new technology incorporated into the manufacturer, the new production line facility that you alerted me to. It's helping a lot to iron out any shortfalls and having smaller teams working on individual projects let's say, installing the grid or installing certain bulkheads, whatever the feature might be, or the engine or the, the harness for the electrics. So they've got experts of each field working on the boat. And again, eliminating issues and having good, solid uh, quality built within the boat. Now listen, what about the Do4 community in Australia? What have you got planned this year to bring Do4 owners together? Yeah, great, Greg. Well, Look, we, uh, we work hard. Look, it's a popular arrangement to keep owners happy and to keep them together. There's a common a commonality. People who have chosen the Jew 4, they like to be hanging out with their mates. And we've arranged a, a Jew 4 owners rendezvous on Pitwater coming up in April. I think it's the 11th, the weekend is 11th, and a couple of days either side. So we've got about, uh, about 15 or so confirmed Jew 4 owners who are coming up. This boat's going to be coming up amongst a lot of others. Um, so we've got a, a get together up at the Royal Prince Alfred, a sail from there the next day up to Refuge, I believe, around Lion Island, uh, food and drinks on the beach at Refuge under the waterfall, and then a, a journey back to uh, the club for a, a final get together, and then people can depart from there. But we find it quite powerful to have like-minded people gathering together, talking about their love, their boats, and of course, talk, we like to talk it up and to help them with... Uh, with any questions they may have as well, because it's hard for us to get around to see all the owners. It's nice to have a, a place to meet on common ground. And in 2021, if uh, people want to come and see you do four on display, uh, boat shows, static events, where, where can we see the do four in 2021? Our next uh, display, Greg, is at the Sanctuary Cove Boat Show, uh, which is in May. We will be uh, displaying our new do four 470 as a minimum. Uh, our problem is a lot of our owners are away cruising or they've taken their boats to exotic areas where we can't get easy access or they're using their boats. So the 470 on display at Sanctuary Cove Boat Show, again alongside our other range. Um, we plan on doing a little bit of a caravan with that boat up to from the, the Gold Coast up to Brisbane and then Brisbane to Mooloola Bar for the corresponding weekends. She'll then come back down to Sydney by that time, the three, the new 390 we have on order will be arriving at a similar time. We'll then be prepping those two boats to have at the Sydney International Boat Show, which is always the first weekend in August. I think it literally is the first, second to the fifth of August. After that, we, uh, we've had considerable success by having a small regional display on our turf, which would probably be down at uh, Rush Cutters Bay alongside with a couple of other boats. We haven't determined the date of that yet, but we'd like people to, uh, to stay in touch. We can do that through our website, our, uh, 
our newsletters and uh, yeah, we'll be promoting that as soon as we know those dates are available. But the two boat shows are coming up straight away. Unfortunately, the pit water boat show is not going ahead this year. Okay. Well, that's very good. I think you've given a fantastic overview and it's uh, obviously great to have some of your experience uh, helming the Do4 brand here in Australia. Um, Marcus, well done on the uh, on the camera there. It's always difficult. You probably get a sore hand, but um, it was just uh, shaking it then. <laughs> yeah, but no, you, you've done really well. And I think these webinars, as much as they're, you know, our style of presenting the webinars isn't as polished as uh, maybe others, but we give a a very good impression of the product, and not just the product, but also of you as a person. And also, as you've just mentioned, just what you're doing to grow the Do4 community in Australia and, and around the Asia Pacific. So fantastic. And thank you both. Uh, and I think we, uh, we will let you go there. And uh, unless you had something else to say, Bob. No, look, we uh, welcome any inquiry. No questions, a dumb question. Uh, again, please lean on my experience. That's what I'm here for. I love boating. I love getting people in the boats. I love hearing great examples and good adventure stories from people. And if we've got any Jew4 owners out there, please send us some photos. Let us know of any results you may have had in racing or adventures you may have had on your boat. Happy snaps. But uh, look, please feel free to call me anytime. I am available to discuss any of your needs. We have a number of boats that we can show you. So uh, please, our details are on our website, which are easily available uh, after this webinar. Well, that's fantastic. We look forward to doing another do four walkthrough in the uh, in the time period ahead. So, on that note, we'll uh, finish today's webinar. Thank you, gentlemen. Really well done. Great. Thanks, everybody.